everyone, it's Mimsy from MimsyandCompany.com and I'm gonna show you today how to make these Ikea Ritva ready-made curtains look custom. So they'll look like you just paid a lot of money for the fabric, brought it to a custom workroom and had custom curtains made. So stick with so me. So the first thing that you're gonna do is cut your Ikea Ritva curtain to the proper length. You'll need to hang your curtain rod, put the rings on, and measure the dimension from the bottom of your curtain ring to the floor, and that's your finished length. Then you're gonna add eight inches to that finished length to determine what your cut length is gonna be because you're gonna sew a double four inch hem. That's where your eight inches comes in. So my, my finished length is 86 inches. So I'm adding eight inches to that for my double four inch hem. And my a four inch hem, you guys, is uh, or a double four inch hem is like this. You, you fold over four inches, there's your raw edge. You fold over four inches again, and there's your double four inch hem. You're gonna press that and then sew right along this edge. And that's your double four inch hem. That's pretty standard on custom curtains, a double four inch hem. Unless you have super tall windows, Sometimes workrooms, if the windows are really tall and the curtains are super long, they'll adjust this to maybe five inches or possibly even six inches, depending upon how long the windows are because you want this dimension to be um, proportional to the window. If you have this tiny little four inch hem and your windows are 120 inches tall or taller, this is going to look really dinky at the bottom of your curtain. That's the way the Ikea curtains come. They come with like a tiny one and a half inch hem at the bottom of this long 120 inch curtain. And that's what makes the Ikea curtains look so, um, you know, ready made off the shelf and not custom and cheap because they've got this dinky little one and a half inch double hem at the bottom. It doesn't give any weight to the curtain. Um, so that's the first thing that you're gonna do. Step one is to cut your curtain to the proper length. And now we're gonna take it to the ironing board, press our hem in, and then sew our hem in. That's the first, um, after cutting, you wanna sew your hem in. Okay, I almost forgot. Um, we've got to take our side seams out before we put in the bottom hem. So grab your seam ripper and um, I will show you um, how I take out the side seam. Okay, so I'm going to start um, on the cut end because it's already opened up because I cut the end off so I can get in here pretty easily and start to open this up. So I'm just gonna open up the first few stitches to get it started and then I will be able to run this down the seam. Now this takes a little practice. You have to be super careful and make sure your fabric is laid out straight and you're kind of aiming towards the top of the fabric as you're doing this because you could very easily, if you point this down, the tip of your the tip of your um, seam ripper, if you point it down, you could rip into this fabric very easily. So you've got to get into that seam and kind of tip your, tip the end of your seam ripper up towards, just slightly, up towards the top of the fabric, up towards the top, this piece. So go a little bit more. You just have to be super careful. I may not, if you haven't done this before, you may want to just pick out the seam little by little because this is very precarious. You just have to be really careful to not cut the face of your fabric. So I'm taking out the side seam all the way up to the top of the curtain and on these Ritva curtains, they come with buckram already installed at the top, which is really good because you want to use buckram in all of your drapes if you want to get a really custom look. So I'm taking, uh, I'm opening up the buckram, pulling that away from the side seam, and I've got to open up this side seam all the way to the end. So open all the way to the end, even, in, including under the buckram, because you're going to put your lining underneath this seam. 
So here we are at the ironing table. I've got my side seams opened up. I'm ready to press in my four inch double hem. I've got my tape measure here to measure my four inches. So my iron is nice and hot. Fold over four inches. Estimate that. And I'm about four and a half. You can see my cut is pretty lousy, but there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now press that. And now we're going to go and fold it over again to meet up that raw, to cover up the raw edge, making sure that it's still four inches and we're a little bit bigger. That's exactly four, four. Okay, now press. And now I'm going to pin um, about every four to six inches or so all the way down the hem so I can take it to the sewing machine and sew this. Alrighty, so what I like to do when I'm sewing in a hem, we're here to put sew in the four inch double hem on the, on the bottom, is I like to use my um, blind hem foot. I find that this really is helpful for getting a nice straight um, seam. So I just run the fabric right next to this, um, let's see if I can get that to focus, right next to this um, piece here and stitch right next to it and this gets you a super, super straight seam. So I've got my blind hem foot installed. My fabric is underneath the presser foot and you see how nicely that fabric lines right up next to this metal guide. So I'll show you. And then I've got my needle just to the inside of that. So I'll show you how that works. Oh, I'm in reverse. straight that seam is and right on the edge. It's perfect for top stitching and all kinds of hems. Okay, on to step four. So far we cut our Ritva curtain to the proper length. We took out the side seams and we ironed in and sewed our bottom hem. So on to step four, which is cutting the drapery lining to the proper size. And the drapery lining is probably the most important part to this project to make your curtains look really custom um, because the lining is what gives your curtain some weight and some body and the proper drape um, of a custom curtain. So um, you can buy lining by the yard at the fabric store. I actually, for this project, I used, I'm using white sheets because I can get them so inexpensively at the thrift store. So whenever I'm um, thrifting, I will go through the, um, where the sheets are and I will pick up white sheets um, when I find them for really inexpensively. I can get them generally for $1.50 or $2 a sheet. And I can oftentimes get one or two um, curtains out of them. So that's way cheaper than lining because lining is usually about $2.99 up to about $7.99 a yard. Um, $2.99 would be using your coupon. It's difficult to get lining for that, but that's per yard and you would need, um, three yards to do this. So it's definitely cheaper to use the sheets, but obviously if you're doing it for yourself, you can do that. Um, so let's get cutting. So I'm taking these side hems off of the sheets because I don't want that bulk of that hem because this edge is gonna be tucked underneath the um, side hem of the fab, my drapery fabric, my face fabric. So I just snipped the edge and now I'm just pulling the 
the uh, side seam off of this sheet and it's not going straight. So we'll use that to cut that edge off. This one is ripping right on the stitching, which is perfect. There we go, we've got the edges cut. So the other really advantage to using sheets for your drapery lining, and I almost wanna whisper this because um, it's such a good, a good thing to be able to do this. Anyway, your sheets come with this nice finished edge, which goes at the top of your bed. Well, this eliminates the need to have to put a hem in the drapery lining. I use this at the bottom of the drape, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second when I lay out my drape. Okay, so I've got my curtain and my lining laid out on my table, and I've got the lining all the way to the edge of my curtain. You see how um, here's the seam that we opened up in step number two. I've opened it up, I've laid out my lining right up to that crease there, and now I can fold it down and I'm gonna pin along here. So my lining is inside of my curtain. So this is the bottom of the lining, and this is the way you want your lining to be, is just hanging. It's not gonna be, the bottom of your lining's not gonna be sewn to the curtain. The only place the lining is sewn in is along the edge here. So it'll be sewn just like that. And then this bottom will just hang freely. And that's so that you don't get any weird um, uh, creasing in your curtain. So the lining hangs freely independently of your curtain, except for right along the edge. So this is what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pin my um, side seam on both sides and then take it to the sewing machine and sew it. But I'm gonna show you real quick the other side. I'm gonna pin this up and then I'll show you how I actually cut the drapery lining on the other side. Okay, so I've, I've pinned my lining into the crease of my drape all the way to the top. So here's the top of my curtain. This is the buckram that was already, you know, uh, ready-made in the curtain when I bought it. So now I need to cut my lining so it's the same length as the actual curtain. So I find the easiest way to cut my lining is just to lay the fabric on top of it here. You can see the, the drapery right through there. I just cut right along that line. So once your side seams are pinned, um, then the next thing that you're gonna do is attach the top of your drapery lining to the top of your drape. Um, this is the buckram, the, you know, the buckram that's already installed on the Ikea drape. Um, I like to just bring my lining up to the top and pin it down here and then I'm going to take it and sew it right along that same seam line that the Ikea curtain maker put in the top of the drape to um, attach the buckram to the drape. So I'll go ahead and just fold over my lining and pin this in and then it's a little hard to go through the buckram, but anyway, I'll pin that in and then I'll sew across the header of the drape along the same seam line that's already there. So I'm not creating any more seam lines. I'll just cut right along this, I mean, sew right along that same seam line. So then, then the lining is completely sewn in. Um, and then the last step is basically to put in the, um, put in the, um, the pleats and spaces and sew those in and then put in the drapery hooks and then you're done. So let's move on to that. 
So for my drapery panel, which is 57 inches wide, I decided to go with a three inch uh, pleat and then a four inch space. You really don't wanna go smaller than four inches for your space. Um, so there you see the three and the four inches. I left three inches on each side for my leading edge and and my um, return and then divided the rest up by three and four inches. So now I am putting my pinch pleats in. So I just, I, you saw my pins were in the header at three and four inches. So I take my pleat space and line up my pins together and then pin through both layers. So I've pinched a single pleat in there. And then I take that single pleat and open it up a bit and flatten it out. And that's what I'm doing right there is just flattening out that pinch pleat. So you can see how I've flattened that out. And then you fold that up in the center, push down in the center and fold that. And that's how you get your double pinch pleat there. And then I use binder clips to hold my pleats in. They work really well and it trains the pleat to stay nice and straight. It works better, it's easier than pins, and it keeps your pleats flatter and straighter than pins. So now all the pinch pleats are assembled and you're ready to take it to the sewing machine and start sewing. And here I, I've got my panel in my sewing machine and you just sew straight down behind your double pinch pleat. So I've got my uh, pleat sewn in. So I sewed straight down behind the double pinch pleat, not through all four layers, just through these two layers here. And now I've got to actually sew in the pinch right here to hold this pinched together. So I've turned my drapery panel around so that I can sew that along there to create the pinch and hold that pinch in there. So I like to sew that right on the bottom edge of the buckram. So you can see that it's, it's thinner here. I like to sew my pinch pleat right on the bottom edge of the buckram so I'm including the buckram in my stitching so that it'll keep that header stiffer. And then I like to back stitch um, straight through this a couple times to make sure that this pinch is not going to come out. So that's how it looks once it's sewn in. A double pinch pleat. That's where you just sewed that pinch in there. That's how it looks. Sewn right down behind there and right here. So that's what I'm going to do with all of these. So this is what the back of the drape looks. The pinch pleats are sewn in and you're ready to insert the drapery hooks. So here's one of the drapery hooks installed. Um, this is what the hooks look like. So you just push that right up into the stitching of your um, pinch pleat and that's how they look. So here's my Ikea Ritva drape hung and styled 
and it's super dark in here because it's pouring rain right now. Um, but there it is. That's how you make an Ikea Ritva curtain look custom. So thank you for watching, you guys. Um, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.